Welcome back to Think Tech. Uh, we're going to get an on the ground report today about what's happening in Maui from uh, one of our hosts who lives there. She's a resident of West Maui and she's a volunteer for the recovery of Mary Maui. No small task. Uh, she's Mahila Stoops. Welcome to the show, Mahila. Thank you for taking the time out from your volunteer work uh, to talk to us about what's going on on the ground in Maui. Um, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I feel that um, the rest of the community outside of West Maui needs to know uh, what is happening here because the lack of communication due to uh, lack of phone services and internet uh, may have allowed, um, you know, miscommunication altogether. Um, I feel, I and many others, that live here and work here and been here for a long time and love this community. Um, I, we, we feel the love from the community and all of you outside of it that have been so generous with donations in many uh, ways and uh, worried about our shelter and about water and supplies and uh, so many other things and money and, uh, you know, we're, it, it's what keeps us going, the love that is coming from all of you. Um, but at the same time, what we feel is that we've been abandoned by our county, our state, and our federal government. And when I say abandoned, I mean um, the lack of support primarily for the first two days of uh, after the fire. Um, I would, I'm, I would give anything to know what any of these officials, top officials in county, state, and federal were doing 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Well, let's talk about what happened on Wednesday morning, at least as far as you're concerned and your family and community are concerned. What happened to you? You wake up to a fire. What well, was that like? I could tell you what happened was um, by 4 p.m., I've concluded myself that there was no phone service anywhere in West Maui. And unless you lived off the grid, like myself, or uh, you had a Starlink uh, or internet through satellite, you had no phone service and no internet and did not know what was happening. So, you know, basically wake up Wednesday morning and try and figure it out what is happening. And, um, you know, by then I knew that there were the Maui Prep Academy has become the second evacuation shelter after the first one at Lahaina Civic Center has um, had to be relocated due to the threat of fire. And, um, you know, we come here to the health and realize that this is manned by the teachers and the principal and by parents and the teenagers and by staff and you know, Red Cross was here for a portion of the time. They were undermanned as well because they had to man the Lahaina Civic Center. They did not have enough people either. Um, it was people in distress, visibly hurt physically. I'm talking about people that had uh, burns and lacerations over their, on their bodies. I'm talking about people that are visibly shocked, covered in uh, you know, like, I, I don't know what the suit, I guess. Um, and you had hundreds of these people. I, we don't have an account yet, or I don't have it, but I'm sure that the school can provide it. I think it was somewhere between four and 800 people that day oh. that the rest of the community had to care for. And these are just the people that showed up at the shelter. There's many others that were you know taken in by anybody they they you know um, had something to offer. So these were just the stranded people that couldn't figure out where to go or went straight to the shelter. Um, the community organized itself. We had I remember have receiving a very large donation from Feed My Sheep. Again, not a county, not a state, not a federal entity, and. Um, um, it, you know, there, there was no expert in disaster management, evacuation here to manage this. It was, you know, 
I, I came here with the thought, the thought, basically, I came here and looked around, and the minute I saw something, somebody that I knew, I was like, my brain is cross-checking and said, this guy is alive, great. And I knew that they had no way to communicate uh, to the outside world, uh, or very, very limited way to communicate to the outside world. I've tried to, um, you know, call as many people as I could and connect as many people people as I could from the ones I met at the shelter to call their family. I taken names from people on Facebook and came back to the shelter and looked for them, which was mission impossible because there were so many people and didn't know where to start. Uh, this is a, a large camp. I mean, it's a small school, but it's a large campus and people were all over the place and everybody's doing something already. Every volunteer that is here is already doing something. So. Um, like I said, I, we, we feel abandoned about for at least the first two days of, the, uh, of this disaster. Uh, when you I realized do have what happened, to say, Mahela, when, yeah? when you realized what happened, you went straight away to that, that school. Um, what was your intention of going yeah, there? Yeah, I found out through the internet by then that the shelter has been relocated to Maui Prep. And I knew that the evacuees were here. And of course, I knew that they needed help. I brought coffee, I, I made them a pot of rice. I get here, there's still no power here. I take another pot, I go back home, I make another pot, I bring it in. Other people were doing the same thing. We're bringing food here to the evacuees and you know, trying to comfort the evacuees and settle them in and um, you know, there are people making, um, um, you know, taking requests for, for uh, medications. And I mean, you just think of your day and the things that you need in your day at home. And all of these have to be now provided for these people that have lost um, a lot, or uh, they literally ran for their lives. Literally. So they must have been pretty upset so, when you met them and scared and traumatized. Can you describe, you know, what, what people were talking about, what they were saying to you when you went to help them? It's shock. It's in shock. Most of these people are in shock. It's, you know, they, a lot of them are very gracious and they say, I'm happy I have my life. That's what they say, I'm happy I have my life. And, um, and then, you know, you ask about what they've lost. I mean, we don't even know all the people that we've lost, right? At this point, we know right. who's alive. Right. Uh, we have a lot of missing people. We know there's a lot of people. And we know what property we've, what we've lost. And each and every uh, person here is grieving. It's a mass grieving every second of the day for every day. You, are, you come and walk around here and you talk to any of the people in the community and it's mass crying on and on. And, uh, you know, it's, um, we're, it, it's, it's not like you, in your lifetime, um, you know, you probably, or in my lifetime, I've gone to somebody's funeral and grieved for them. Well, we're grieving for hundreds of people at the time, people that we knew that we cannot find, that um, are in shock because they lost everything. Some lost their, their homes, some lost um, homes and business, some lost, um, you know, savings because it may have been of the condo that they were renting out for uh, to stay for retirement. Yeah. Uh, my own um, client lost their home that they're in their uh, late 70s trying to sell it to retire the mainland for better health care. It's gone. <laughs> and you were lucky though. And and, and that you were lucky you didn't lose your home, I am, am I right? I, I am very lucky and I feel very privileged that I'm in a position to help others. And I feel that the community has been so resilient and so creative in figuring out and supporting each other. And I I do want to um, share with you the most recent uh, failure of the county. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about people coming in and out of West Maui. 
and why should people have access or why should they have shouldn't they have access well the plan that our county came up with is for all of us uh, that and you know I realize some of the uh, those listening to the show may not be familiar with the geography of Maui, but essentially uh, you could leave West Maui on the highway going towards Malaya and Papalui, but to come back, you have to come through the very famous treacherous road, road of Kahakuloa, which is a one-lane road on the side of the cliff. This is the same road that if one rents a car, the rental agreement specifically say says you're not supposed to go there. Okay, so I just got off the phone with friends again in their 70s. They went to Kahului to get medication, came to Kahakuloa. They are scared to death after driving that. And this is what our county wants us to do. They to take this road, all of us. Also, I would like to mention that this treacherous road, this one lane road on the side of the cliff, there are several communities that the community of Honokahau and Kahakuloa itself. These people are located closer to Wailuku and they would be using, in normal times, they would be using this road uh, to go to Kahului uh, against the traffic coming that the county is proposing to do for people to come back into Lahaina. So you have hundreds of people that live in Kahakuloa and Honokohau that basically you're telling them now, okay, go around the island, but what would have been for you a 15 minute ride, you know, fairly safe, you now have to take an hour and 15 minutes. Why did the county do that? Well, you have to ask them. We have a bypass that uh, we have a road to Malaya and Kahului, uh, which we call highway, that is functional. There is no damage to it. There is, it's drivable. They've let people have, guess, if, if they can let people drive on it one direction, why couldn't they not let them drive the other direction? Yeah. So let me also share with you what, besides the fact that, you know, Okay, uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do it your way. We're gonna drive your. We're gonna put our list, our life in danger, and we're gonna drive the way you want us to drive. Well, to be able to do this, you have to obtain a placard, and you had to show up this morning, either at Napili uh, Park, which has been a hub for donations and support, or you could um, go to Wailuku if you are on the other side. Well, let me tell you. Hundreds of people showed up at the park this morning to get their placards. The county people have showed up with no plan to crowd control. There was no plan to, there was no, no way to designate lines. I think at one point the cops starting directing traffic. They, had, they were just parking on, the side, on both sides of the highway and then crossing the highway to get to the park and get the famous placard. And let me tell you what this placard looks like, because some of you may wonder, okay, what is this placard? It's a piece of paper that it is orange in color that apparently has someone's information and it has the signature of, of a policeman. I mean, uh, I, I think an eighth grader can produce that, put it in their, uh, give it to the, to the parents to put it in their windshield, and go by, I, I mean, go get through a checking point because the checkpoint, the, the point of the placard was to speed up traffic and the policeman would have looked for something orange and that's it, not read the placard. Are, are there policemen out and about? Are there policemen actually helping? Are there, are there uh, military out and about? Are there people from FEMA out and about? Have you met them? You're at the hub of activity, uh, you know, north of Lahaina, West Maui. Um, and I wonder if you've seen representatives of the, you know, the county, uh, the police, um, the state, uh, the federal government, the uh, military people. 
Uh, so they, they should be so they should I, be there with you, right? They should be everywhere. This is my point. Um, you know, I live 12 miles north of Lahaina. Um, I have made it, uh, except for day two, where I ventured all the way to Kanapali. The remaining of the time, I have not made it past Napili towards Lahaina. So I understand that Lahaina, there's a concentration of uh, National Guard and FEMA and you name it. Uh, because you know it's a it's an area that they you know by now they're looking for bodies um, and but uh, from so I, I don't I can only relate what what I see here Napili to Kanapali at the most I want to tell you the first two days speaking of support uh, we're there's, again I want to stress for everybody imagine you don't have a phone you don't have any power. You don't have access to any information unless somebody comes and give it, give this to you, right? And uh, the your your what what are you trying to do is okay. Where is my coworker? Where is my friend? Where is my uncle? Where is my parent? You name it. Where is my employee? And the roads were crazy. There were a lot of car accidents because all the traffic lights are off and uh, people don't know how to navigate an intersection. And uh, it, it, I, I personally was afraid to make it, to try and go back out and, you know, do my rounds and check on people. And I, I have a lot of elderly uh, people that I know and they were, just disconnected and families are calling from the mainland and want to know how they are and it it, it, it was tragic it well it tragic. sounds like you know it's, it, it's a complete wasteland in other words no water no power um, no sewage well um, no um, no food I mean no, what, are, so what do people eat where are they sleeping so as of now the first two days there was the, you know, there was water, but there was no, um, but of course, we didn't know how good the water was. Um, there was no, um, what you call it, uh, electricity and no phones, no internet. Those are the first two days. And um, I also want to, to point out something else. And I, I promise I will say something good about the county as well. Uh, I'm not just going to say the bad stuff. But on the bed stuff list, there was a water um, um, warning, like don't drink the water, it may contain blah, 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 and, and so on. Well, not all the pipes are, or not all the, not all the subdivisions are serviced by the county water. And it created a lot of panic among people, and I'm getting people, questions from all these people is the water uh, you know uh, this look at the subdivision is it county or not because there was some and forgive me i'm not a water expert but there was a, a, a i guess assumption that the, the pipes that came from lahaina through lahaina that are county water the, that water um is uh, was not safe to use whatsoever so all they had to do is, you know, I don't think it takes five days to figure out how good the water is. But um, I, I do want to say, again, I want to say something positive. And I do applaud uh, all the officials that managed to evacuate all the tourists. Um, they have done it pretty quickly. Um, I think by day two, there's hardly any tourists here you, you, by, you, by the end of day two oh, this but, is a good thing because if the tourists had not been evacuated um you would have to take care of them too am i right well here's the classic story that i mean that a lot of us experience where uh, i'm driving um going to my friend in kapalua and uh i see these people they're in a daze they're like what what are we doing and they said, well, uh, they just, it was Tuesday still, 
And uh, before before the fire, they just made it to Lahaina from the airport. And they said, we, we need to go get something to eat. We, we got nothing. And I said, well, you know, everything is closed. Don't go to Lahaina for sure. And all the businesses are closed. Just go to your condo and whatever. I said, you don't have a bar or a cereal bar or anything? They're like, no, no. I said, okay, just head to the first restaurant nearby. I, I directed them. I think, because I think at that point somebody, um, or maybe I'm mixing up the days, but I, I gave them direct. I didn't have anything in my car myself, and I didn't know where they were staying, so I couldn't feed them. But um, that, that you can you imagine tens of thousands of tourists doing this in a days. Well, you know, trying yeah, to and, figure and, out and what to do, and the panic. This raises the question of, um, you know, who, who is speaking to you? Who is speaking to the others uh, who have lost their homes, don't know where to go? Who is speaking to the people who are walking the streets dazed and traumatized? Um, is there any communication going on? We know that a number of public officials have made statements to the media, statements to the national media, if not the global media. But query, has anybody come around and said, Mahila, uh, we'll, we'll be there. We're going to do this, that, and the other thing. We're going to help. Has anybody come around and given you comfort? What I see is fellow community members working as much as I am or even harder, trying to figure it all out. We are figuring out housing. We are figuring out um, schooling. Lahaina Luna and Lahaina Intermediate put out a word, school is not closing, find the school on the other side. This is their solution. And I have a very simple question and fear, actually. Who's going to be here to rebuild this? I, I, I'm dedicated to this community. I'm not going anywhere. I want to see it again. I, I want to, I, I think it's a privilege that we have now to make sure that the history of Lahaina stays and that it's not just a burned site. Uh, you know, I don't know what it's going to be, but I feel like I have a duty to to preserve its memory in, and I have to stay here and rebuild it. And who's going to do that? If you're sending, you're telling everybody, go away. That's what the county is telling people. You know, I understand Lahaina Luna School and Lahaina Intermediate may not have power. Think of solutions. Find a hotel ballroom. Find the civic, I don't know, the civic center. It's like these people have no imagination. They, and, you know, I, I, I do have to say, a lot of it is due to the fact that they don't know what's happening here. Well, you and can... they didn't care what, what was happening here. Because if they cared, Wednesday at 6 a.m., there should have been dogs here looking for people. There should have been uh, cellular on wheels, on wheels, uh, you know, those big towers. There would have been starlings all over the place. Do I, I mean, I have to tell them what to do. Well, that's it, why I, mean, I, I, it, I, you know, I want, so here we have a wasteland. We have the county as a civil society, you know, is is stopped. Its economy is stopped. Um, its essential services is are stopped. Um, and you've been there. You've been volunteering since last Wednesday. And I wonder, how do you see this unfolding? Um, are there steps being taken well, to get back to normal? Uh, are we are we making any progress in recreating Maui? What's the situation? Well, I everybody wants to get it to to. to we, we can't just sit at home and grieve. Yeah. You know. And I have to say this, uh, maybe the mayor is grieving now. We've been grieving since Tuesday. Yeah. So, and, you know, this community has to get going. And the other problem that we have, okay, they figured out a route, which is, I, I talked about that already. I'm not going to talk about it. But let me tell you who can come to West Maui. Well, you can have um, West Maui residents. 
you can have volunteers, you can have um, relief uh, personnel and medical and so on. But this community that has, I believe, approximately 12,000 residents had 50,000 people at any, on any given day, part of them tourists, part of them service providers. So if you need an electrician right now, because you know, uh, you're say, I'm willing to donate my uh, condo to let somebody stay in it, but uh, somebody has to go wire the lights in the bathroom. Well, which electrician can come do that? Because the electricians that are here, they're very few. And guess what? They may have lost their home or they know somebody that lost their home or as we're gonna find out pretty soon, they've lost a dear one. So these people, I mean, I'm talking about my grief. These, their grief is exponentially higher and are they going to be available to service this community to put it back together? No, you've got to let service providers from the rest of the island come here and help us. I wanted to ask you and, about that, Mahila. So we know that the tourists, for the most part, have left at, at the urging of the county, yes. I, I guess. Um, and we know that some people yeah. who, who have lived in Maui or re residents of Maui have left. Um, they don't have any way to survive there. So to the extent they could leave, they left. Um, what we don't yeah. know is who's coming back, uh, who the electricians, um, the doctors, uh, the providers of one kind of thing the or plumbers. another. Are they, the plumbers. Yeah. Are, are they coming yeah. back? The, the, the babysitters, the child care providers, uh, you know, what I'm concerned most right now and what I'm focusing uh, all my efforts now are two things, housing, putting people in houses. And the second one is uh, helping in every way possible to put as many kids in the schools that are still available, which are which is Maui Prep that can only take so many kids because of the size of the campus, the number of classrooms, and only uh, so many kids because also the number of the teachers that would be available here in uh, West Maui. And Kapalua Preschool that, you know, I think I don't, prior to this disaster, they would have accommodated maybe, uh, you know, 30 kids. What, what about the hundreds. kids who were traumatized? Uh, you mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Some of these kids, you know, yeah. stood, stood at risk of losing their lives, or they knew people, they know people who did lose their lives. They, they've been through a, a really, really, really bad traumatic experience. Who is, who is helping them? Who is talking to them? Who is helping yeah. them deal I, with that? Nobody. Nobody. I, 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 wanna, I want you all to imagine uh, parents in their car with kids driving through flames and kids screaming, I'm going to die. Yeah, we've seen footage of that. The other thing that springs out of what, what you were saying, yeah. and I know you know something about this being a Maui resident, is that Maui has had a pretty a pretty impacted bureaucracy over the years. And if you want to get a building permit, in, if you, in the past, if you wanted to get a building permit in Maui, it was a problem. But now, a lot of people have, hundreds, thousands of people have lost their homes. And if they stay in Maui, and, and a lot of them feel the way you do, they, they want to stay in Maui, they want to rebuild. Um, a friend of mine has this experience right now. He lost his home. It burned up. Uh, thank goodness he was not injured or killed. But the point is that you, you, have to, you have to get the insurance money, assuming you have insurance. You have to get a design professional to help you design a new house. You have to, um, you have to get the permits. Uh, which is, you know, Maui's famous for that, for not providing prompt permits. Um, and um, ultimately, you have to get a contractor, and everybody is online for these things. 
it's not like they're waiting to, to help you because there's thousands of people who are lining up uh, to do exactly what you want to do. Any talk about that? No. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have to say, uh, Jay, you probably and our viewers have watched more, more um, press releases or news conferences from uh, the governor, governor or the mayor than I have because I've watched zero. And frankly, at this point, I don't know. I, I don't need to watch what they're saying. I see it. I see it more than I've seen it more than they have. And there's nothing for me to learn from them. So I have no idea what their plan is. Um, I know that we're, um, as a real estate agent myself, we are, the Realtors Association of Maui has created a website to uh, match people for housing. Um, they, I'm, I was told for, by one of my friends that uh, it's already working, that their match was made. Um, I know the Realtor Association of Maui is working to put like together like list of providers for the community for uh, how to handle, uh, you know, call FEMA, how to apply for relief, uh, how to deal, how to, you know, what do you do? Your mortgage is still due. What do you do about that? Oh, wow. Your house is burned, but your mortgage is due. You, or, you know, uh, you don't have a job for the foreseeable future. Your mortgage is due. So, you know, the, the, your business is gone. You used to employ people. When, uh, we, some of we, them may be on the west side. Yeah. When you look down the road here from where you stand, where you have stood for the past several days and see, you know, that the society collapsed, uh, and the aftermath, the kind of chaos. Uh, where do you see Maui going? Do you have a vision of how this is all going to unfold? How, how these people uh, in the school are going to do? How the kids are going to do? How the economy is going to do? Um, how the jobs are going to do? I mean, what, what's your expectation on this, Mahila? This is not easy. I know, you, you know it's hard to face this, but I wonder if you have thoughts about it. I have so much faith in the community and the people that surround me. For the past almost seven days, all I've seen, all I've seen is care and compassion and willingness to serve in any capacity. You know, I'm not going to sell real estate, but, you know, I could do bookkeeping. I could deliver food. I, I have other skills. And this is what I'm telling all these other people that are so uh, distressed over the loss of, uh, of jobs. Um, I'm, I'm telling them, listen, you still have skills and we need to build up this community. You'll be needed. So, so what have you, what you, know, have you, you will have a job. It's not going to be the same, but no, it's true. Yeah. But what have you learned about the community in Maui? You said you know they're strong, and uh, they they help each other. That is a, a social interaction well, and support. Let, let me but, let me give you some examples of. And I I want to ask forgiveness for not mentioning all of them because that would be impossible. Because there's hundreds of acts of kindness and dedication going on every day since Tuesday. You know, people saving other people from their houses, people notifying people to evacuate because the police couldn't keep up. People directing traffic for other people. Uh, you know, one of uh, the um, uh, Paul Brown, who is pretty known in the community, I was told he was standing in the middle of the road. Fires are coming. People are blocked. They can't exit Lahaina. And he is out in the street directing traffic so people can move on. 
people getting out of their car and cars and getting um, uh, and cutting trees and pushing trees and opening gates in, in an effort to facilitate exits out of, of Lahaina. Uh, I had, uh, you know, I, I think I mentioned to you a little earlier today, uh, you know, the, the principal, the head of school at Maui Prep, the parents, the staff, the teachers, they've been here volunteering at the shelter, manning the shelter. I, you know, uh, I've seen Betty Sakamoto. I mean, I don't want to disclose her age, but you guys can figure it out. Uh, and her husband, Roy, uh, have stood out in the street handing out water and sunburned. You, you have a, a background that is, um, that is a sort of global. Um, you grew up in Europe, as I recall, uh, and you've been through some tough times in Europe, for that matter. And um, now, now you're faced with this. And it's not only the last seven days, it's the next seven days and the next several months. Yeah, or and years. the next seven months. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. wondering you know, how this all works for you. Obviously, you, you immediately, on a knee-jerk basis, you got out there and became a volunteer and a perfect altruist um, and helped in every way you could for these several days. How are you going to continue to do that? And, and my final question to you, Mahila, is um, what, what exactly have you learned about yourself being in this crazy, chaotic situation? So I cannot say it enough. I have a lot of faith in this community that we are going to get through this. We're going to mourn everything that we, I should say, everybody that we lost and everything that we lost. And we're going to get ourselves back together and keep it going. I have absolute faith in this. And... Um, I've 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 seen it at work. I, you know, it's it's so encouraging to see all these people helping each other. It's I, I have a lot of faith in humanity, and I know that if the county, state, federal officials had more information, I I, I believe in their humanity as well. I can't believe, I don't believe that they could treat it this way. When we call the county line and we ask the person that answered the calls about traffic into and out of Lahaina, uh, if they've ever driven the road to Kahakuloa, do you know what they said? They have never done it. But this is what the county was advising people to do every day. You know, people on the other islands, I mean, there's benefits and detriments to being an island state. People on the other islands, you know, that you see the political officials making comments and trying to um, inform everyone about what they see is happening. And so, um, but the truth is um, that um, they're, they're not up close to it the way you are. Uh, they're not looking it right in the eye the way you are and others in Maui. And uh, they may feel, well, well, you know, if it happens in Maui, doesn't happen then here. Then What's your advice to them? But the, this is why we're having this discussion. I have absolute faith that anybody that lis listens to this um, discussion or views this discussion and understands the hurt that is here, and they will. I have faith that they will, and they will make the right decision. You need to be here and, and understand what has happened and what's happening and make the decisions. and. Try those proposed solutions yourself. So let's assume they and, understand. And did, let's assume they hear you and they understand what you're saying. Uh, what, what should they do? What should they do on Oahu and Kauai and, and the Big Island? What should they do um, to help? Because, you know, to have Maui, you know, uh, you know stop this way turned into a charred hulk this way. It's like a hole in all of our hearts. And so what should people I, on the other islands do? 
I, I so appreciate, you know, you saying that it's like a hole in your heart. Um, I, I have to, to tell everybody, we feel your love. We do in many ways by everything, the, the messages of encouragement, the, everything that you've done to acquire supplies at the uh, shelters of, um, or facilities on other islands and ship them here. Uh, people of Molokai that send supplies by boat. Uh, people that have flown helicopters with supplies. You know, every effort that you've made, uh, every thought and prayer that you've said, we feel it. We feel it and we appreciate it. I do want to say, though, that what we're going to need help with now is move towards recovery. And that would mean access in and out of Lahaina easily. And uh, for one, for two, putting kids in school. So for any of those that are listening to this, if you're wondering what to do, uh, look in your community. If there, is, if there are any kids that are evacuated, and there are many, you just don't know, but they are, do something for them. Take them to the movie. Read a book for them. Uh, babysit them for half an hour so that the parents can close their eyes for and have a quiet moment. Um, you know, watch them at the pool. Anything that you could do for a kid. That, that's the first thing. And the other thing that uh, we're trying to, to do primarily through Maui Prep until you know, any school facilities can be made available is raise as much money as possible so that we can fill the school. We have all the kids that we're going to take in are distressed. And we're going to have to pay for their tuition to finance the tuition, the functioning of the school, not for one year. You can't bring a, a kid to a school for one year and then tell him, oh, no, you could move somewhere else because there's no more money. So um, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to, you tell me if I'm allowed to be specific on how to do this, uh, where to donate or not, but uh, that, that's something to do. Yeah, um, you, you can be specific, Mahila. If you have any so, specific uh, suggestions, make yeah, them. So I, I do. Um, please visit mauiprep.org, and that's the uh, school website. There is a link for financial aid. You go in there and you donate any amount. All the money is going into the big pot to support people, uh, you know, all the students that cannot pay. And if you are an educator, if you are somebody that has worked in the school system, if you have ideas on how to create ad additional schooling for kids here in West Maui, whatever, in a commercial building that may be available, uh, I, I don't know, any ideas. We, we want you to help us figure it out. We, you know, we, we yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the right We're open thing. to any solutions to make it happen. Okay. Yeah. Let me say, Mahela, you know, it's uh, really remarkable and wonderful that you are who you are and that and that you immediately began to volunteer and help people, encourage other people to help people. Um, but I would say this, uh, although you've had a very tough seven days, your work is only beginning. And that um, hopefully you can it, it, participate it in the effort and to restore Maui. It is, and I do want to make it very clear. I am not trying to toot my horn. I am not um, uh, trying to say how great I am. I am simply saying that if it came down to me to do it, there's probably a problem. And you ask me what I learned about myself, it would, everybody's learning is that they could do many things. We and all have to. We all anything, have to learn that lesson. You, you, you don't have to do heroic gestures. You could just hold somebody's hand when they're crying about how much they've lost, and that is, yeah. There's, we don't need a big gesture. 
Thank you, Mahila. Mahila Stoops, a resident of uh, West Maui, helping us understand what is going on there. I hope we can circle back um, not too distant future and talk with you some more, Mahila. Uh, in any event, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, aloha. Thank you all for the love.